What is up guys, Delboy here. Today we are going to be talking about some boxing. It's been a bit of a shit day in all honesty, so why not talk about some boxing? I mean, shit day at work. Fucking crazy hobag cunts out here, man. Trust me. I mean, fucking hell. So, I'm a single guy, but naturally I do like to date. We like to uh, explore the options, you know, try different palettes and whatnot. We, we, we all like to have a bit of fun before we settle down. I'm still quite a young lad, so... Like all young bucks, I like to have a bit of fun. But, um, so I, I talked to this girl online. Good looking girl, you know. Um, get chatting to her online. Things go relatively well. You know, she wants to go out and, and meet up, have a date. So I take her to an Indian restaurant in my local town. You know, really good reviews, expensive. I thought, do you know what, we'll, we'll take her somewhere nice. And the first thing I notice about this bitch... She chooses the most expensive thing on the fucking menu each and every time for starter, for a main, and for the dessert. And every single fucking time, she left something. So that's the first thing that wound me up. Like, she's picking the most expensive shit on the menu, and she's leaving shit each course, yeah? So that wound me up for a start. And immediately, I could just get the vibe that this fucking bitch was a fucking high-maintenance, just... You know, one of those type of girls you need to speak to every two minutes to make sure she's happy and whatnot. And that's not me. Um, so I, immediately I see that she's a high maintenance type of girl. It's got expensive tastes. I get talking to her about random shit, and uh, she's saying how how she likes to eat out a lot. She likes to um, you know eat, eat in different restaurants, try different things, which is all well and good. But she tells me that oh she doesn't know how to cook and. Um, she doesn't like cooking, she doesn't see why she should do it, and all that nonsense. Um, firstly, man, if you can't cook, I am not going to get in a relationship with you. I mean, that's disgraceful, man. I mean, people in their early 20s can't even fucking cook. This stupid cunt could probably barely turn on an oven. She's that kind of um, upper self. And um, and we, we get we get talking about all sorts, and I was saying about how oh, I'm, I'm looking to sort of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of saving for my deposit for my first place and whatnot and she's like she kind of said that basically ah oh, she doesn't save she lives for the moment basically lives paycheck to paycheck and i don't want to be hearing this shit on a first date anyway she she was a decent looking girl and actually she put out first date which is fucking surprising um but she puts out and after that I kind of stopped talking to her you know I've, um i replied to the odd text here and there um because at that, at that stage i was kind of debating whether i wanted to go back there at all or whether I just wanted to go back there just for a, a couple of more, you know, free shags, basically. And uh, I decided against it because I just didn't like her. Um, she's a good-looking girl, but I just didn't like her. So I decided to leave it at that. But anyway, after a few days, she fucking starts to send me random texts, keep on trying to call me. She then proceeds to call my fucking work to try and get in touch with me. And uh, it's just fucking... It's insane, man. And I've blocked basically all of her fucking numbers. She doesn't know where I live, which is good. Um, and I'm hoping this shit is going to blow over, man. I mean, there's some fucking crazy people out there. How the fuck can't someone in their early 20s know how to cook? She can't fucking cook. She has no concept of saving money. You know, um, some some people, man, my age, my generation are absolutely fucked, to be honest. Um, and that's why... Right now, I really can't be asked to even try and get a fucking uh, girlfriend right now. To me, might as well just play the field for a bit, see what happens. If we meet the one, we meet the one, but I'm in no rush, man. Fucking hell. Listen, man. These fucking universities need to be fucking teaching courses on budgeting. Trust me, man. So many people my age can't fucking look after their money. And it's not even just my age, to be fair. A lot of people can't look after their money. You know, people are so materialistic, man, and it's... It drives me insane, man. Drives me insane. But um, we've gone off on a massive, massive tangent, haven't we? Let's talk about Joe Joyce versus Lenroy Thomas. This fight is possible for the undercard of David Hay versus Tony Bellew too. And I wanted to share my brief thoughts on the fight. I actually really like the fight for Joe Joyce. This would be Joe Joyce's fourth fight and, for my money, the toughest fight of his career so far. As we know... Joe Joyce took on a really good debut opponent in Ian Lewison. He won that fight quite handily, but Ian Lewison did take him a few rounds. After that, he fought a guy called Rudolf Josic, who wasn't any good at all. And after that, he fought a guy called Donnie Palmer. So after the Ian Lewison fight, 
Joe Joyce has struggled to get top opponents. And even for this May the 5th card, he was looking to get Derek Chisora, but um, Derek basically priced himself out according to some people, so that fight is not going to happen. So in the meantime, Joe Joyce has been looking for an opponent, and I feel Lenroy Thomas is a good replacement for Derek Chisora. I think it is a good step up for Joe Joyce. It's a step in the right direction, and also there's going to be a title on the line, the Commonwealth title, so to me this fight makes a lot of sense. I feel that he's going to bring something different for Joe Joyce to figure out. In the amateurs, Joe Joyce was much more of a pressure fighter than he is in the pros. In the pros, he's kind of adopted a role where he, he mixes it up really well. I've seen him apply pressure, but I've also seen him stick a jab and, and move and look for that right-hand counter. In the pros, he's really kind of been quite versatile so far, which has really surprised me. But mainly, he's been boxing at range, using that jab, using that right hand behind his jab, and uh, using volume, basically, to wear his man out. His feet are also a lot better in the pros than they were in the amateurs. He's a lot more clumsy in the amateurs when he was, when he was fighting as a pressure fighter, but uh, in the pros, his balance is a hell of a lot better, and maybe that is due to his uh, trainer, Ismail Salas. You know, Salas is a very good trainer, trained some, some world-class fighters over the years, so you'd think that Salas would be looking at Joe Joyce's feet, and that's the first thing he's going to kind of correct. And I feel since he's turned pro, Joe Joyce's feet, his balance, his footwork has been the most impressive improvement so far. I wasn't really expecting this type of fighter when Joe Joyce turned pro. I was expecting a, just a pure pressure fighter, really. And he does bring elements of that with his volume and whatnot and intensity, but he boxes a lot better than I thought he would as a pro. But um, the interesting thing to me in this fight is how Joe Joyce deals with the back foot game of Lenroy Thomas. Lenroy Thomas is a good boxer at a certain level. At Commonwealth level, he's a good boxer. He likes to use his feet. He'll pop that jab. He'll be defensive. He'll only really look for the one-two. He doesn't really get too ambitious. Um, he, he looks to pot shot and point score, basically. And Dave Allen was soundly outboxed by Lenroy Thomas in their first fight. And in the second fight, although it only lasted a round and went to a no contest, I felt that, you know, straight away... Lenroy Thomas was outboxing Dave Allen. So at a certain level, Thomas is a good boxer, but I feel above the Dave Allen level, he's going to start to struggle. Even in the first fight with Dave Allen, although I felt Thomas clearly won, to me there was times when it looked like he was on the verge of falling apart and unravelling, but Dave Allen just didn't apply enough pressure. But when Dave Allen had him on the ropes and when he had him up close and when he was mauling and, and making it rough, I, I felt that Lenroy looked uncomfortable at times. And... Joe Joyce is going to give him that type of fight at times. And Joe Joyce is a lot bigger than Dave Allen. He's got a much better punch output than Dave Allen. And he hits harder than Dave Allen. And he's just a better skilled fighter in general. So I feel eventually he is going to get to Lenroy Thomas. But early on, I think Lenroy can give Joe Joyce some issues with his boxing skills and his back foot game and his defense. But eventually I just feel uh, Joe Joyce is going to get to him. I feel the volume of Joe Joyce will give Lenroy Thomas a lot of issues. To me, Thomas isn't really a volume puncher. He just kind of waits on the outside, pops a jab, shoots that left behind it and not much else. He's quite one-dimensional. And I feel the punch volume of Joe Joyce, the size of Joe Joyce and the uh, and the footwork of Joe Joyce is going to give Lenroy a lot of issues. He's going to have a lot harder time getting in and out on Joe Joyce because Joe Joyce is a bigger man with longer reach. You know, he's going to be on the end of some of those shots when he tries to get in and out. So I feel this is a lot harder assignment for Lenore Thomas than Dave Allen was. Dave Allen is pretty stationary, doesn't really let his hands go. He's not a big puncher. You know, um, he didn't really pose too much threat for Lenore Thomas. And to me, even Dave Allen, there were times when Thomas looked really uncomfortable. And if you're uncomfortable against Dave Allen, then, you know, Joe Joyce is going to take you out. Just too much volume. He's too big. Uh, the punch variety as well is quite good. You know, he can he can work that body to slow you down, which is another key thing. I just feel Joe Joyce has too much for Lenroy Thomas. But a good little step up. It's going to show him a few different things in the ring as a pro. You know, he's not really fought a mobile boxer so far. All of the guys he's fought so far have been flat-footed plodders. So I feel Lenroy is going to bring something different. And it's a good bit of matchmaking for Joe Joyce before he really steps up. I feel this is a good bit of matchmaking. And also, another thing, Lenroy Thomas is known in the UK because of the Dave Allen fights. So it's an easy sell. Um, but yeah, 
I feel Joe Joyce will have far too much for Lenroy Thomas, but it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on, to see how he solves the defensive puzzle of Lenroy Thomas and to see how long it takes. What do you guys think of this fight? Peace.